Aloha, Ohana. Check out this piece. We got this coffee table from someone I knew for my coffee shop job for free. You Thank can- goodness. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't pay money for that, Danny. Oh man, that's the truth. It is a mess. Covered in stickers, covered in paint, goop, I, I some sort of paste that is stuck to the top. <laughs> And then this thing like has so many dings in it. And this is just a flat pack piece of furniture. It's not Ikea, but you know what I mean. Like it all comes in a box. You have to assemble yourself. It's just MDF and it is not the highest quality piece. But I'm willing to bet that the majority of you have something like this in your home. I know we do. You do, right mom? Oh, all of my furniture looks like that. That's not true. You've got some nice wood pieces. First things first, Danny pulled out her heat gun and she is just using it to peel off all those little stickers that were everywhere. It did leave a bit of residue, but she was able to get that off when she washed it. I'm debating whether I should ask my customer who gave this to me what this mystery gunk is. You guys, I scraped, I cleaned, I sanded, and it kept reappearing. I was finally able to get it smooth with sanding, so the paint I use will be able to cover it. But what in the world is this stuff? I don't think it's paint. Well, let's see if we can get that big schmear off the top. We're just gonna use LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner. It's the concentrate that we dilute with a lot of water. Just scrubbing and I'm trying to use the scraper too to get off all of this junk. It did pretty well, but I have a feeling that sanding will do the best job. Because those insides are pretty scratched up and there's not really a good place to transition between this fresh paint I'm gonna use and this glossy black. So I think we're just gonna literally have to paint everything, every nook and cranny. So let's get these areas clean. Many times when we work on MDF pieces, we try to sand down to any veneer we can find, even if it's super thin. So I actually started on top with an 80 grit to take a bunch of this black off to see what I could find. Unfortunately, it really is just MDF, <laughs> no veneer on this piece. So we're gonna scratch that plan and just scuff sand for our paint. We don't normally save bun feet, but we're trying to keep our costs. I, I like bun feet. <laughs> I like messy buns, but not bun feet. <laughs> but you know, we're trying to keep the cost down on this piece because we're not going to be able to sell it for very much. So we're just going to scuff sand these with my favorite little trick of sticking this in the drill and spinning it for a quick sand. This fine black dust gets everywhere. Danny, go take a shower. I'm on my way. Hey, I'm not sure what happened to this corner, but it looks like a dog got to it. I hope it was a dog. There were teeth marks all over. It is time to add a little pizzazz to this coffee table. And we're gonna use what, Mom? Wallpaper! Woo woo! So we're just gonna whip up some wallpaper paste with this Zinzer product. A little bit goes a long way. So we've actually had this box for over a year and used it on numerous projects. Hey, I think I just spotted Mr. SEO's legs. Is that him? That's about all you'll see of him. (laughs) 
So as Danny is getting the wallpaper all ready to apply, I just want to mention that we actually have a wallpaper tutorial. We're going to put the link right up here on the right and just click on that if you want to learn how to do this. Apparently I had let my pieces sit for just a little too long and in this Arizona heat they were already drying. So I'm just adding a little more paste to the furniture itself and a little more to the wallpaper piece just to make sure that it sticks. There you go, that's thinking girl. Looking back, I actually think it would have been a lot easier if I had just cut each piece of wallpaper down to the exact size for these insets. Unfortunately, I left extra room, which really added more work for me because the next day when they were dry, I trimmed it down, but then there was leftover paper that I had to deal with that was stuck, leftover wallpaper paste everywhere. So it was fine, but it definitely added about 30 minutes of work. On a few of the corners of the wallpaper, it didn't adhere perfectly, and I think that was because the pieces were too big and couldn't quite get attached. So I just stuck in a little bit of wood glue, and they all secured down fine after that. On most of our pieces, we love to just bring in new hardware to give it a whole new look. But in this case, this is kind of a cheap piece of furniture. So we were very, very conscious about everything we spent our money on. We wanted all the attention on the wallpaper, not on the hardware. Again, I think if I had pre-cut these wallpaper pieces, this caulking step wouldn't be necessary. But as it is, I was left with frayed edges and a little bit of jaggy jaggedness. <laughs> so I'm just using the caulk to make a nice clean seam between the furniture and the wallpaper. Prime time! It is time to prime the wallpaper, time to prime all this glossy black finish so that it's ready for some color. Why? We don't always prime. Why did we do it this time? Because this stuff is glossy and because that wallpaper just soaks in the paint. So I'd rather spend our primer on that paint than our special color. And the color for this piece is this gorgeous green. Is this what you were envisioning when you saw me using that wallpaper? 
Hopefully it's the exact vision you had in your head too. But look how great it goes together. It really sets a nice vibe. Danny and I just want to say thank you to all of you. You are truly becoming our Ohana. And we especially appreciate all the comments that you leave. And just the fact that you're spending time watching our videos just means the world to us. So thank you and mahalo. For those wondering, we use two coats of primer, two and a half, three coats of green in some places, and then two coats of top coat. And it'll be nice and sealed and ready for lots of traffic and action. For this paint, we used Aloe Green by Melange One. We always like buying those large quart sizes, which are about $40. And unfortunately, this piece had so much surface area, the front, the back, the top, the insides, that we ended up going through three quarters of a quart. So we spent $30 just in green paint on this piece. Not great for our profit margins, but it'll be worth it. So even though this piece is beautiful now, it was a free piece that is still flat pack furniture. So I really think the most we're gonna be able to get for this piece is maybe 195. And so if we get that price, our cost ended up being $40 total with everything else. So hopefully we make about 150 on this. So certainly not great profit margins for the amount of work that went into this piece. But you know, if you have pieces like this in your home that you're just looking to update to get five or 10 more years out of, this is a great option. Thank you so much for watching you guys. We hope you'll join us next week for a special collaboration we're doing with a bunch of other furniture flippers where we all take turns giving you tours of our workshops. Stay tuned if you need ideas for organizing those spaces. Aloha. Aloha. Goodbye. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Au revoir.